Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Hoppy Craftsman, and we are super prepared as always. Boom. Uh, my name's Eddie, this Hi. is Chris. Hello. And we're in the studio, and it's award season. It is award season. It's everywhere. Everywhere you look, dead awards. People hanging medals, people posting medals. It's yeah. Crazy. Take a picture with your medal. <laughs> Maybe we should do an awards giveaway paper cups. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we do actually saw some really nice, like, recyclable uh metal ball cups they like the look, aluminum ones they look like yeah look like solos but they're <laughs> yeah. actually metal <laughs> that'd be pretty aluminum. fun like, <laughs> just write with a sharpie like yeah. best beer goes to <laughs> maybe we could do that at uh gabf or not gabf uh uh strong beer fest strong beer fest we can just take those metal cups and be like hey you had the best beer at the festival here's your <laughs> award give, give them a cup yeah <laughs> that maybe. might be your thing going forward all right but uh yeah we went to the arizona craft beer beer awards i know it's always so hard to say that yeah as the kabazaba and right before that gabf ended it's uh, true. i think world beer cup was in may okay i'll I take your, i'll take your <laughs> yeah yes i guess i should pour my beer so a beer and then um the arizona craft beer awards festival which is confusing was october 21st oh well, by which the way, that'll probably be a patreon my review of that uh, I love that you opened this bottle up before we started the show so that I couldn't open it on the show. Uh-huh. That was really nice of you. Yeah, I did. That's what I told you. <laughs> well planned out <laughs> to a T because we got a lot to go through. So yeah, there's much here. We got to keep a pace, but we are drinking a beer. We and are. And it's theme related. God knows the condition of this beer. Well, we'll see. It's the, not Carvana. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. It's the Carvina, right? That's how, that's how I would say it. Carvina. Yeah. Carvina. Carvina, which yeah. is uh, a Czech Pilsner from BRI. And it's style number 46. Because okay, this is one of the beers that was submitted to the Arizona Craft Beer Awards. Right. So, I'm judging. Yeah. And so what was cool is that when, and this last year, it's, I guess it was like that at the, the awards. Like they had all the beers that you, you were trying them, but we didn't realize it until like halfway through that. <laughs> It was like, yeah, oh, we just wait. thought it was just random. Because there were some other random beers there, and there was the beers that they were, they were, got submitted to the whole you know award system and uh this year they actually had them separated out for just those style of beers within each different tub and you could just go grab one and have them label you had them nicely labeled and stuff it was really cool so i dug that so you want to start you want to start with the uh the top of the top where do you want to start with this list well first we'll start with what i mentioned first the world beer cup oh okay we just mentioned because some of these beers i talked to at least one brewer that i can confirm that the beers they submitted to gabf were the same beers they submitted to the Arizona Craft Beer Awards. Okay. So that makes sense. We'll go a little bit over GABF, maybe any categories. Obviously, the Arizona winners, any of the categories that you might be interested in, and then we'll move on to the Arizona Craft Beer Awards. Yeah, it makes sense. But in World Peer, World Peer, World, 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 world Beer Cup, World Beer Cup, where your peers judge you. Which do you think that's better? Is that a better competition? Is where your peers judge you versus like a gabf where i'm guessing there's, there's peers in that though too right with our peers in gabf yeah it has I mean, to be all industry people i mean yeah. there's there has to be certain people that are just judges but right yeah i don't think it wouldn't be not pure all right i mean would we even I mean, consider peers i don't know maybe probably not we don't brew anything <laughs> we have yeah it's true so tail dragger 5g american wheat looks like it won a gold that's from saddle mountain Tail dryer clandestine and a Scotch style ale. That looks like a silver. Uh, State 48 one for Baltic Porter, which is a gold. Alchemist Breakfast, a coffee beer from Flying Bassett, one of bronze. And then Lazy G, Sunshine Blonde, an English ale, one of bronze. And those are, these are the world beer? Yeah, that's okay. the world beer cup. Okay. So that was in May, I think. I could look it up, but I can't be bothered. Eh, well, it's, it's way, way past that. We don't have the attention span to go back to <laughs> go that. Go back. Do you think there's a benefit to submitting the same beer every year? Only oh, if there's the same judges. I don't know. Like, I mean, is a, you know, because you talk to people about brewing beers for competitions like that. It's not about do you like this beer or not. It's do does this beer meet these style guidelines, right? Right. And so, I don't know. Maybe there's stuff in there. It would. Listen, it, to me, it would make more sense if you it went the other way. If you want a bronze and then you want a silver and then you want a gold. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that seems like a more 
progression because you're like, all right, so we tweaked it from bronze and we made it to silver. We tweaked it from the silver and got that gold. Like that makes sense to me, but it went the other way. So what happened <laughs> to, to I in and, and again, everything's subjectional, right? I mean, different judges, maybe every year, different people, different, you know, as much as you want to get that bias out of there and have people say, you know, if you don't like this, then don't, don't judge by that, judge by what it's supposed to be. But it's hard to get past you not liking a style of beer. <laughs> and, right. And, you know, like if you don't like the way it tastes, it's, it's really hard to be like, Oh, does this actually have the multi backbone of rye? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's tough. So I think some of that's just kind of, you know, RNG it's luck of the draw situation with some right. of the judges. So, yeah, I think personally, I think I would stop at gold. Like if I submit right. it once and got, got gold, gold, I'd be like, I'm done. Done. One and done. Ne- never submitting that beer again. 200%. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And then it, on the lo- label for eternity, it's going down as GABF gold. Yeah. I mean, well, who was it? Fate recently did that with their last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, what was the a fucking. Um, was it the, it was the candy bar? Yeah, right? it was candy bar. Was the candy bar? It was like, what was it? I like two, four, t- 2014 <laughs> or 2015? Yeah, just, silver medal, I think? Or? Yeah, they just, they, they just, they get rid of the date, didn't they? They just said, they didn't put, it was one of them, some of them, I can't really, like, they won a bunch and they, they left out the date after that point. They just actually said silver or bronze or whatever it was. It was really funny. Yeah. Like, we'd, mm-hmm. we'd have to follow up with some people because I wonder if outside, like, genuine craft beer fans and, beer nerds like us if yeah. people actually give a shit about medals yeah, I, and awards you know i the, the people that we talk to if i remember is that there there are certain breweries that really see it as like, like they like the competition they like to see that part of it um and others uh it's more of a draw to get people to come into your brewery right like that's the whole point of it is to, to stir up interest you know because you can say hey i am a you know, gabf gold it doesn't even matter if you know what gabf is right if you tell somebody oh i'm a gold medal winning whatever people are going to want to come try that beer right so or they're much more likely to try that beer at your place or at someplace else because it has an award next to it so yeah it probably comes down to how good you are at promoting and advertising that you did win yes right it's all, all the works after the <laughs> after the award that's when the real work comes in i'm sure and, and, and places i mean there's probably you know you go to you know, big craft beer places, and I'm sure that makes a big difference, right? Like, that's like some clout there, and especially in the community there, it's more of clout where we might not have that that focus in Arizona as much as other places do. Like, you know, if you go to Colorado or, you know, Denver, and like people are drinking, there's lots of craft beer there, right? Right. So, you know, winning awards there is kind of a big deal. Where here it's like, eh, cool awards. I don't know. That's all I got, Ed. <laughs> you're, you're done on that done. one? Boom. Next next topic. Let's go. So we'll move on to GABF. Do you know how many categories there are in GABF? Uh, 1,400. A fun fact. It's a fun fact okay. for you. Uh, there's 101 categories. It doesn't seem like there's enough. <laughs> Name them all. Go. <laughs> IPA, double IPA, juicy IPA, West Coast IPA, uh, Hefeweizen IPA, Stout <laughs> IPA, Porter IPA. No. Sour IPA. Sour IPA. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 101 categories plus the breweries of the year. So, uh, okay. what does that put it at? Like 105, 100, whatever? Yeah. Um, sure. Math. Five Arizona breweries won six medals. Wow. That's still pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you had the stats of how many breweries submitted, well, that's you know true. everybody doesn't submit. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, it's like all stats. I guess it depends on if. You can skew it one way if you want to, you know, if, if not a lot of people submitted, then right to, you know, it's, it is what it is, but still one. A win's a win, Ed. Listen, a win is a win. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this one's a good advertising opportunity is fate won a bronze in the American sour ale category for their single hop sour. Did they, they have that at their sweet and sour festival? I don't remember. Yeah. I just remember they had an IPA there. I don't know. I, I just remember. Oh, I didn't go to this last one, but the previous one, they I don't think they had any sours. It was really weird. But I mean, if they can turn that into promoting their little sour fest, I, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then the weirdest story of GABF is Flying Bassett Brewing, who closed shop seven days after GABF ended. That's so crazy. Won a gold medal for their citrus snack. In contemporary Goza. Yeah, and 
you know, I, I, there's a, a. Do you even know what a contemporary Goza is? It's different than a modern Goza <laughs> and a traditional style Goza. I don't know. <laughs> more, to, more, more or less technology. Yeah. And then on the other end of that spectrum, in the same court category, ironically, is a brewery I've never heard of. I don't even know if it's open yet. Is Basin and Range. That's that's one a silver medal for in bloom in the same contemporary Goza. So that was the one that there was a little discussion uh, that people were like, I think that's that's the one, and they submitted a beer to the Real Wild and Woodsy Festival, right? Uh, and so that was the that was the last one they submitted a beer to. So they were still eligible to actually submit beer to the to, to, to JBF. Interesting. Yeah, it was something. It was. I remember people. People were like, they didn't even have a location or blah blah. And they're like, and it was like, nope, they brew out of here. Like, and and, and Rob actually put a little statement out saying, you know, this is why. This is what. This is why they're able to do that, and they were fine. So, interesting. Yeah, because other people had like, <laughs> I've never heard of this place. Where do they brew? <laughs> yeah. How do they win an award? Well, that happened. Not even open yet. <laughs> Did who was it? Wasn't it Moto Sonora? Didn't they win medals before they were even open? Yeah. So maybe that's an Arizona thing that we're <laughs> working into. We, but, we don't exist yet, but we're going to win medals. Right. To start. Well, I mean, if people are, uh, what do they call that? Uh, contract brewing at other places, you know. Then I mean, I, I can see that. I mean, does that? Just because you don't have a building does not disqualify you from, you know, so many beers to GABF. Well, technically it doesn't. So, and we'll get into that oh, when, okay. we, when we get done with this. Uh, this one's an oldie that's a, I, I don't know if they've won a medal before. I, I haven't seen it, but Lumberyard Brewing won a silver in the ESB category for their Railhead Red. Right. Which, super surprising. Right. Because that, I mean, that was probably one of the first beers that, caught my eye in Arizona or when I started like really looking into craft beer and stuff. It's like, Oh, railhead red. This is, it's, it's a big <laughs> flavorful beer. That's not usually something I drink. Let's give this a shot. And every time you go up there, you see it everywhere. So you're yeah. like, Oh yeah, I'm going to drink this. Yeah. Well, I think we went there and got dinner and that, that's why I drank, <laughs> you know, you got what you want when you're there. So, uh, again, cause I think we talked about before, like that hooks and done, I think got bronze, right? That's the one. That yeah. So d- two or uh, four beers, one, uh, our four breweries won two medals in the same category. Right. So yeah, Ren House won a bronze for the ESB for the Hooks and Dunn. And it's funny because like the Hooks and Dunn to me, and the the Railway Red, like those aren't even like they're not even similar. I, I don't know. It's so weird that they're both both in the ESB category. <laughs> I don't yeah. see them as being the same kind of beer. I don't know. I like the Hooks and Dunn a lot. I think it's really good. And then Ren House also won a bronze. For the blue quad roller skates, which you said you didn't really like as much as you did the last time. I did not. So maybe it, like you know, like you said earlier, it's more about meeting the style than it actually being a yeah. amazing beer. But yeah, no, I just I don't know if some, some of the hops they use or whatever, which had a weird didn't have a great taste to it. I don't know. It wasn't awful. I wasn't like poor, I was drink porn at any point. I just was like, meh, I'm not going back. It wasn't like. So I was at my buddy's cabin and we were hanging out and they had uh was it the pon- pondo from uh Ren? Oh yeah. And I was like, Oh, you should you guys should have got the dreamy draw and they were like, Oh, they had it, we just didn't get it. And I was like, You should have got it. And they were like, We can go get it. And I was like, We should. And so we drove to the store <laughs> and we got Dreamy Draw. Because that beer is delicious. So it wasn't in that realm of the world of things. And I think that category is the most entered category. I think it was like over sure. like a hundred or 119 or some crazy you know it's funny to me that like yeah whenever the the juicy hazy craze kind of started you know people were boohooing on it and people were like oh you guys are making mistakes brewing process and blah blah and now we're to a point where it's one of the most popular beer styles in the u.s right it's it's super popular here <laughs> it's the most you know submitted category to all the beer festivals because it's so popular so it's just funny how like I don't know. Sometimes, I, I mean, I guess it's how it really all, it always works is that consumers' tastes are going to drive whatever the industry is going to do anyways. It doesn't matter. Oh, I was way off. 365 entries for the juicy or hazy IPA category. Yeah, that's still a lot. That's a lot of that's a lot of entries, right? Obviously, so. that's the one you're interested in. So the gold medal for that one went to Away Days from 1852 
uh, Bruco out of Visalia, California. Silver went what? to Juicy Mild Tones, Corn Coast Brewing, Colorado from, and we have to eat our words on this one, Lincoln, Nebraska. What? <laughs> or how much shit we talked about. <laughs> Name one thing that, uh, besides corn in Nebraska. Yeah. Obviously, well, well, Corn Coast Brewing, so yeah, we were yeah. close. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, I don't know all the breweries in all this state, <laughs> let alone all the other states. German style Pilsner had 228 entries. That's surprising. Um, any other categories you're interested in? Uh, sour Stout. Uh, N.A. it says. Oh, that's weird. No Sour Stout category? Not al- applicable. Oh. I mean, just a st- I mean, they have. Or any state you're particularly interested in? Well, Michigan. Ed, come on. <laughs> oh, Chris's Michigan Minute. Yeah, what Michigan Breweries won. Um, let's see. Oh, Bell's Brewery Oktoberfest. From Comstock, Michigan, for American Amber Lager. They won a bronze. Redwood Brewing Company out of Flint, Michigan. Hope their water is good. Yeah, they filter everything. Really well, <laughs> uh, Actually, I would imagine Flint's water is better than people's water in <laughs> most places now. It's probably like it's almost too good, probably in some places. They won a silver for Thor's Hammer, a Belgian style strong specialty ale. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Thor was Belgian. I did not know that either. You know what I liked was that Grab Thor's Hammer. Mm, that was really uh, missed that one. Yep. Mm. That was a good beer from Borderlands. Any other uh, categories you are particularly interested in? Heavily fruited sours. They have chocolate beer. That, that's, is that a category? Uh huh. How is chocolate beer a category? <laughs> but, but a sour stout is. But a sour stout isn't. <laughs> and neither is triple IPA. Yeah. What about Cascadian Ale? Is that in there? Um, collab, chili beer, um, coffee stout or porter. De- dessert stout or pastry stout? Yeah, pa- yeah. What's that? What's you want the pastry stout? Yeah, pastry or dessert stout. One of those two. Uh, desserts, dessert stout or pastry stout. Uh, the gold medal went to Corporate Ladder Brewing Co. out of Palmetto, Florida, for their board meeting. Modern Times won the silver for Mega Devil's Teeth Double Dutch S'mores Edition. Oh, okay. And then Modern Times won the bronze. So is the Chaos are, Grid, the final course. Are they just trying to like rebuild from that one brewery? <laughs> yeah, they, like they, they just got back down to one and now they're gonna try to keep <laughs> growing it back out again. Uh I mean that again, they never made bad beer. It's just, you know, tragic the way that, that all folded up. So uh double double IPA. So I guess triple IPA falls into Imperial because it's the category is actually Imperial India Pale Ale. Okay. So the gold went to Claremont Craft Ales in Claremont, California for their triple IPA. That's the beer name. All right. Uh, Drama King won silver from Liquid Gravity. In oh, okay. San Luis. So it was a California sweep. Uh, Del Cielo Brewing Company out of Martinez won for double M07. And they're also from California? Yep. All three from California. All Claremont, right. San Luis Obispo, and Martinez. Oh, I didn't know. I thought that was the name of the brewery. <laughs> What about our other friends, uh, New Mexico? Let's see if anybody from New Mexico won. Oh, a, yeah. Did, did John, uh, those guys, get, did Raleigh get anything? I don't believe so. I didn't see anything in post from them. They're usually, they're usually pretty. No, he's, I think vocal. he said, yeah, we didn't win anything, but congratulations to everybody who did. New Mexico. So, pretty clever name. Uh, Marble Brewing out of Albuquerque won a silver for Thunder from Dortmunder. Do you want to guess what kind of beer it is? Uh... Dortmunder for a thousand. Yep. Dortmunder or German style Oktoberfest. Yeah. Right. And then Flix Brew House. Isn't that the movie thing? The Flix? Yeah. I don't, was that the all, the uh, competitor to uh, the uh, Alamo Draft House? Yeah, I think so. But Flix Brew House won for Tropical Mirage. They won a bronze in the juicier, hazy pale ale. So, yeah. One day, maybe you should petition and you can get your sour stout category in there. Yep. Me and like the five breweries that make it. But now let's move on to the award ceremony that matters because it's one we actually went to. Well, listen, <laughs> and I think we talk about it all the time, but I think we really should go to GABF. Just go hang out. Maybe, maybe if we can get media stuff, talk to some people. But I think it'd be fun just to actually even just do a a road trip, like a road to the episode, and go up at there. GABF. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Oh, but before we move on, do you care about any of the brewery of the year winners? Um, 
the top. Just give me the top. What's the top brewery? The the, the very biggest top brewery. But the, I, this answers the so, question before about basin and range because the category is zero to two hundred and fifty barrels. Give me the smallest winner and the largest and winner? the largest winner. So everybody in between. I'm like, bah, whatever. Zero to two hundred and fifty barrels mm-hmm. um, is Shred Beer Co. out of Rockland, California, and then the fifteen thousand. And one to a hundred thousand barrels is St. Arnold Brewing Co. in Houston, Texas. Dang. All right. Well. And then the brewery group of the year is Allagash. What's the what does that mean? I have no idea. Oh, all right. Cool. Well, can you crash the Allagash? <laughs> I wonder if it's if they're not owned completely by Oh, somebody <clears throat> Make like a, a collective of crappier people. Yeah, because like I don't know what the small is. ones, like it has like for Shred Beer Co. It says Zach Frazier and Amy Heller. Oh, okay. And then for Allagash, it says Team Allagash. So yeah, it's got. And be then some. like Saint Arnold, it says Saint Arnold Brew Crew. And then some of them are people, some of them are. So I wonder if it is like yeah, somebody else has ownership in this, so it's not really part gotcha. of that. Yeah. Based on the barrelage, who knows. They all have their goofy whoop. Very true. Anyway, we got to go to the Arizona Craft Beer Awards, courtesy of Phoenix Magazine and the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild, right? Is that who? That is who put it on. We got invited by the guild. We're not big time enough to get invited by the Phoenix Magazine. magazine. Yeah. Maybe this year we'll submit ourselves to be the number one viewer or reader's choice podcast. (laughs) So we can put that on our Instagram. If Zach doesn't nominate us, he's losing his Patreon membership and all his perks. He's a, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that's true. Zach, do it. I don't know when that comes out, but set a reminder. Yeah. (laughs) Put it on your calendar. (laughs) Write a, write a letter to the magazine asking you, asking when you need to submit your uh, nomination. Yep. And then go from there. But it was fun. I mean, it's a it's one of those things where we go to like, you know, beer festivals and things. And you think that we, we see a lot of brewers and stuff that are people that are pouring there, people that work at the tap rooms. And so we, we know a lot of those kind of people. And we go here and there are some of those people there, but it's mostly people that are not those people. It's like owners <laughs> and other partners and stuff. And then there are, brewer, I mean, some of the brewers are there, which is cool. Um, but it's a large majority of people that are not. Right. Right. And so it's a, it's a definitely different crowd. And it, the dress for it. I was going to say, you can 100% see that in the range of style and clothing choices made is. at that event. <laughs> it's so funny. You're like, well, that guy's an owner because he's wearing a suit. Yep. <laughs> he's a businessman. That dude's a brewer because he's wearing a pineapple Hawaiian shirt and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt from BRI was in his standard I mean, uniform of just like <laughs> dicky shorts and a, a mechanic shirt. Yep. Didn't matter. Yeah, funny. some people got dressed up. Some people look like they're going to a beer festival. It's um, all over the place. Great. Yeah, but it's Arizona in a nutshell. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, that's the range of what we're we're working with here. But it's cool. So you, you kind of hang out. You kind of mingle and stuff. Like I said, you they yeah, there's a whole, like a meet and greet. There's a whole like table full of beers you can try that are all the different ones that they actually sample and got submitted to the you know the awards or for the award stuff the process. And then there's a big giant security board thing. That's there. That's delicious. They had it last year. They had this year. I don't know how it, that there's just so much. I think it's, I almost think it's too much. What beer? No, the charcuterie board. Oh yeah. Well, that's sponsored by Oso. Right. It was. I would because this was the second annual AZ Craft Beer Awards. Right. Uh, Oso did provide. I don't think they provided it. I think they just paid for. Yeah, they paid for the. Like I don't know if that's coming out of Oso's kitchen, but they p- yeah. provided that spread. Very nice of them, though. It was delicious. Uh, then yeah, and then you kind of if you had time, you get to walk around the 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 museum there because it's, it's a heritage center for you know Arizona, so they have like a, a whole museum inside there, which is cool. But you don't need to walk around it more than once. Yeah, <laughs> once was enough. We did that last year. So and then yeah, then it goes to right into the ceremony. They have, they have an amphitheater, which is cool. And so you go sit down in the amphitheater, and then they actually like it's a whole award ceremony. Man, they put on slides and photography, and people cheer, and it's a lot of fun. Which the first thing I got to point out is that fucking Game of Thrones intro that they did. <laughs> yeah. Like fucking what year is this? Right. So people that maybe were able to like, I think they live streamed it. I think the guild live streamed it on their Facebook or something. But yeah, they, they made they had somebody make a, a Game of Thrones. They did like a title sequence. Title sequence. Just changing the names. 
but it was the Game of Thrones, and it was it was so, it was like, well, it's been cool a couple years ago. Yeah, before the final season. Yep. <sighs> and then the lighting issue was kind of weird. Well, Rob said he didn't want to turn the lights on. I just think he didn't want people to see a shiny jacket. Could be what it was, <laughs> but it was he was just like, want to yeah, blind people with the shiny jacket. It's too bright. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and we're like, okay, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, let me laugh. And then to me, the audio was a little muffled. Like it was hard to hear some of the announcements. It right. just sounded like it was underwater at times. But I don't think that's any of their fault. No, I mean, yeah, they can do there. You're using that that amphitheater stuff. You know, and I'm sure they didn't pay somebody to come do their sound engineering for them. So it's just no. them running it. Oh, maybe we could sponsor the uh, sound equipment next year. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I know some other people that can do it for us. Uh, they're actually professionals at that. But uh, the two things that stood out to me right off the bat was there was a lot more people there than the first year. Yes. And there was, which is kind of sad to say, there was probably, I would say, double the participation from breweries. And most everything. Yep. Because, I mean, last year, the first year, there was some categories that had three entries. Yeah. Which, and I guess that's something we should probably get into uh, if you want to announce. Well, we start going some of the categories. We'll, we'll I guess we, we can touch on it on one of the categories. Well, we got to start with that one. Yeah. So, the porter slash stout uh, category, the winner was Look Brewing Company, and it was Chasm Chomper. The silver was the Baltic Porter from State 48, which I said they won a World Beer Cup award for that one. And then bronze, no award. They right. didn't give away a bronze medal in this category. And we and there were seven entries. Right. That was the thing that was that was very <laughs> befuddling to us. We're like, wait a minute. That says seven entries. Only two people got stuff. And so if you're a patron supporter, you're actually going to hear our interview with Johan, who is from the Phoenix Magazine, who helps put this on. Uh, and he actually, they actually do a craft beer podcast there as well, which is kind of interesting to listen to, but he actually spent some time with us and talked to us after the award ceremony. And that was one of the things we asked him, we're like, how, how does something like that happen? And his response was that even though you, it, again, it comes down to like the styles, right? If you don't meet a certain criteria, like it's a point system, right? If you don't meet a certain criteria, you are not getting yeah, they took they took a break, Morning. and I asked at Matt from BRI. I was like, yeah. "Hey, what, what was?" And he was he was clear about it. He was like, "They made it very clear that there was a minimum floor for points. Yep, if you even qualify for a medal, if you don't hit that bottom, you're not even point total. You can't get a medal. Right. So that everybody who participated knew about it. I think it's it's kind of sad, but <laughs> yeah, it adds it but- adds some integrity to. It does. System. It really does. Well, I mean, like I, you don't get a participation trophy. Yeah, which good because then yeah, then it adds a little bit more clout to what the, the award is, right? They just don't they're not just giving them away to anybody because there's three there's three people in this category, so I guess that only the three people are going to get one. Right. You know, what's the best of the worst situation going on? And that's that's not cool. So I get it. It was just really it was really <laughs> to see that on the board and be like, wait a minute, something's not right here. But it made sense afterwards. So the last one I could find from GABF not giving away a medal was 2020. They didn't give away a bronze category. They gave away, I think, like 271 out of 272 or something like that. Oh, really? Um, it was the bronze in the, I believe it was the gluten-free category. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you know, it's very, like I don't know. It's, it seems weird to me because like, you think that, your first initial would be like, okay, well, maybe there wasn't a ton of gluten-free beers that were, but like, I remember they, they had at one point had to be like, well, we're going to make a completely separate category for hazies, right? Right. Because there was so much popularity for it. So there must have been popularity at some point for gluten-free beers that they made a whole category for it, but evidently not enough to <laughs> have people win anything in it. Uh, that's funny. I guess I understand why they didn't do it if they're going to try and make this a legit kind of thing. Like, you yeah. can't just come here and, oh, yeah, we're going to submit a beer for shits and giggles. <laughs> yeah. And, and then just get a medal because of the amount of people entering. I guess that that's not going to happen. No. No. Which is good. It's good for them. They shouldn't do it. So I agree with that. Which the, the Instagram for the beer awards, which I think it's 
A C B A Awards is the Instagram handle. Okay. Which is weird that they didn't call it the A Z C B A, but maybe somebody else had that. But they were sending out like real time posts. Real time posts. It was really cool. Of the winners. So that was cool. They didn't give away the like, glass, like the print of glassware like they gave away last year to. Uh, no, they didn't the, give, do like the Brewery of the Year got special stuff, but they yeah. did, which I thought was cool. They they made an announcement, I think it was at the end, yeah. that if you wanted your metal to be turned into a tap handle, they had a company that would do that for you, which I, right. I think is a really cool idea. Yeah, I mean, I think people should. I mean, that makes sense. Because it, it definitely makes it stand out, right? Yeah. So, Especially if it's a gold one. Like, <laughs> what's that gold one over there? I want that guy. Um. So should we go over some of the categories? Yeah. I mean, just I mean, f- let's let's hit the big ones and then the the very last one, which is the. I'll know. give you the gold medal winners, and okay. then if you can ask me if you want to know who was go, bronze go, and silver. Go any deeper. Yeah. All right. Uh, your favorite category: German Pilsner Lager. <laughs> yes. Sure. No, I don't. I'm good. What's the uh, top Pedal one? House? Won okay. the gold. The American IPA. Victory, victory or death from Moto Sonora Brewing Company. Uh, silver, by the way, just to mention for fun, we thought about accepting on their behalf is uh, <laughs> Roses by the Stairs because they weren't there. <laughs> so that's funny because, yeah, I, I, we, I messaged Jordan was like, hey, are you going to come to the awards tonight? Because, you know, it's always nice to see people we know. And uh, he's like, no, nope, got some things going on. Got, you know, won't, won't be there. And then, yeah, they ended up winning a few things. Uh, and then at some point, I think I think you said to me, like, maybe we should just tell Jordan that we should have gone up there for him and accept his awards. <laughs> and I was like. Maybe we, yeah, that been good. We should go up there and been like, and Rob, Rob would have been like, what the fuck what are you guys doing up here? He's like, no, roses by the stairs. And we're like, proxies, we're proxies. Yeah. <laughs> We've proxied before. <laughs> yeah, he'd, he'd be, we'll see, I guess. If we're, if, it's, if we're good at anything, it's pretending to be something we're not. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, West Coast IPA, West Clear from Arizona Wilderness. Chris is just shaking his head. All right. Um, another brewery right who now. hasn't opened yet. Specialty beer or specialty category, whatever that. Entails. It's a catch all. Just a catch all. It's catch all. Just a yep. Um, a moose bouche, a well, potpourri it, of beers. Well, it's because it, it, like if you if you like if it's a really good beer, but it doesn't meet the exact specifications of that category, you can yeah, just put it into a specialty. It. Yeah, you can just put it in specialty instead. Uh, mobility scooter from Catalyst Crafted Ales. All right. Yeah, it was cool to see. I mean, yeah, we talked about them what a couple episodes ago. They just opened up, right? Yes. And they're producing but i mean again it, it, it it's harder when you go from a brewery that i mean they had at astra so they could brew beer right so <laughs> if you're starting a brewery here sometimes it's hard to have that many beers to be like to submit because you're don't have your liquor license and you can't start making beer until you open your business so a little tough yeah keep going sours uh sunset sour from phoenix beer co the wood age category, barrel o cherries from Simple Machine, stout and porter. We went for that. Look, brewing and state forty eight took gold and silver, and there was no bronze for that one. Nope. Uh, Scottish. We said all had four peaks, and they didn't win. <laughs> uh, Scottish is Rojo by Barrow Brewing Company, and clandestine got a bronze in this category. Which was, I think, it's silver in the, yeah, GBF. No, the or beer oh, cup, World oh, Beer Cup. Um, experimental IPA, Boom Dynamite. How is that an experimental IPA? What? I don't know. I said I, I think when they announced it, I was like, that doesn't seem experimental to me, but okay. Um, from Oso, and it says Oso Paradise Valley. Well, it was, it, here's the thing. That one, they, they 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 can that one. That was it was canned all the time, right? It's when you see the cans from them. So I was like, how is it? I mean, I guess what your definition of experimental is, but <laughs> okay. Uh, your other favorite style, German Vienna Martzen Dark Lagers. Ooh, I do like those. Uh, Beach Cruiser Amber Lager from Battle House. Makes it, all right. Um, Hazy IPA. Do you want to guess? You were there, so you might remember. Oh, <laughs> man. I think it was Four Peaks Raj IPA. Correct. No, it was Spellbinder from Rent House. Good. <laughs> As um, it should be. Obviously, this is a category people would be interested in. So the silver went to Fog Lights from Moto Sonora, and the bronze went to Warrior Hazy from Greenwood Brewing. Yeah, I, just, I can't remember if I've had that or not. I had the I had the Roseberry one from them. That's what stands out because it's very unique. That's an experimental beer. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, American Amber slash Brown went to Huss's Oktoberfest, which we had that yep. on our Oktoberfest show. We did. And it, I, I, it was somewhere in the middle, I think. Yeah. Right? I think I think I said it would have been way better. It would have been up there if it wasn't off a shelf. At yeah, right. right. <laughs> I think I think that had something to do with it for sure. Um, Imperial Juicy slash Hazy IPA and Imperial American IPA. They just lumped all that shit one into one. Screw GABF into three categories. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> um, a beer we both love, King Gus from Oro Brewing. Dude, that was real good. Like, and that was one. Like, I didn't realize how big of a, a can that was until I ordered it. And then she brought me a crawler <laughs> to the table with my chicken. And I was like, damn. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Bucket of chicken, bucket of beer. Yeah, it was great. It was delicious. That was so good. And I was like, please do both. Do this again. Yeah. Uh, obviously, another category people are interested in. So the silver went to Gears of Glory from Catalina Brewing, and the bronze went to Double Double from Roses by the Stairs. And what was that for? The oh, the the double Imperial the Imperial Imperial Hazy Rose IPA and Imperial American Ale IPA. Again. That's a fucking mouthful. And the, the Roses by the Stairs again, man. That was yep. I, I think. I said, I said, Jordan uh, screenshots. I took a photo of the, the thing when he won. And I said, hey, congratulations. And I was like, congratulations again and again <laughs> and again um, and again. Hazy, hazy pails and international pails. Smooth transition from 12 West Brewing. I don't know what that category is. I mean, I guess I know what a hazy pail is, but what's an international pail? Because mm. all these breweries are local. <laughs> What's next? Oh, Blondes and Goldens, another one of your favorite beer styles. Petal House. Nope. Oh, so? Blonde Ale from Barrio Brewing Company. No. Um, Classic. Yep. Uh, Belgians. Grand Quad from Grand Avenue Brewing Company. Um, Silver was JoJo by Roses by the Stairs, so that was probably when you're like, and this one. (laughs) Yeah. Um, American Fruit, Fruit Wheat. Uh, Trigo Suave by Oro Brewing Company. And then what else we got here? American Pilsner Sloggers, another one of your go-to super, beers super, and styles. Super, yeah. Uh, Dragoon Pills from Dragoon Brewing Company. Uh, best in show. So we're done with the categories. Uh, best in show was Dragoon Pills, Dragoon Brewing Company, which I don't know what best in show means. I think they would get a scored highest overall for the categories it was in maybe. I don't know. I don't know so that either. They had before they did like the little – bronze gold silver slide the slide before that announced category it announced the amount of entries and then it was a lot of them were sponsored yeah yeah but the tagline on the best in show said 19 qualifying gold medals i have no idea what that means maybe that was one the most medals other places or around i don't know uh, yeah, yeah i don't know if it's like well, it's well, won this many medals somewhere else or we, maybe like it, we, we can ask somebody that question <laughs> we would know like, did it qualify on people's like yeah judge i don't, I don't thing know for so that one was a little confusing i didn't yep. that didn't co- that came out of right left field i guess i don't know i was like what, what's the 19 medals mean because they were moving through the categories like they didn't even some of the slides were gone before even like the gold medal like got their medal right um and then the most important thing is the 2023 brewery of the year right was Petal House, followed by Roses by the Stairs and Ren House. Yeah, which is pretty crazy that they were right up there with them. So, so Petal House in this event won three golds. They had four total entries. So that's pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, return. Roses by the Stairs had two silver and one bronze, and they also submitted four entries. And then Ren House had one gold and two bronze, and they had four entries as well so doing the math so you don't have to it basically is you got six points for a gold five points for a silver and four points for a bronze because pedal house had 18 points and roses by the stairs and ren house had 14 which if you go by olympic rules technically ren house got second place because they had a gold that's right Oof. well listen don't tell jordan that when we see him next <laughs> well here's the uh the other thing if you uh, the best can art also was weird. Yeah. Um, so Saddle Mountain won. I don't remember what the beer was. Yeah. Uh, Ren House got silver and then Oso got bronze for four different beer cans. It was like all it was like their dynamite, their popsicle. Like they had. What? Was, yeah. I don't. I was like, so they got one for like collective 
Collectively, Design? these four cans look great. <laughs> Individually, meh. That's funny. But if you, that those obviously weren't calculated into the Brewer of the Year. Nope. But if you would have, I think that would have moved Renhouse into second and uh, Saddle Mountain into third. Oh, interesting. If you would have added those to their medals for the actual events. Well, crazy. Well, well that didn't happen. <laughs> You don't want that uh, counting towards. No, no. Not the quality of your beer. You shouldn't win. A, you shouldn't win. For can for design. Brewery of the year for can design. I don't think that's. And then the other thing is they gave away the, what was it called? The 2023 director's award. Oh yeah. Which seemed oddly placed. I think it should have been at the end. Right. It was just like, hey, we're getting started. By the way, here's this. And they had like a little montage of, I think it was like news reports and stuff. Yeah. A big initiative from uh, Ayla. I'm not even going to try and butcher her last name. Head Brewer. She's been a head brewer, I think, at a couple places in Tucson. But she's kind of doing like a border kind of hands across America kind of thing. Right, yeah. Like trying to get, it seems like a, a women initiative to get women into brewing. And it's also trying to get collaborations going across the border between mexico and the u.s so i don't know if they have well because yeah, they're and they're sending just, they send send these, these brewers there to, to belgium to like beer schools and stuff and help them get certified for yeah it's education and support support education, and cool. resources so, for people and, obviously we're butchering collapse. it so you should look into it but i just yeah it was we'll, we'll put a link in the description <laughs> of the show notes of this to that initiative it's pretty cool it was, it was a good thing uh I, I it was it, it should have been at the end because they needed a red light because she she could talk she she right you I mean she you could tell she was nervous she probably yep. I mean but she was very passionate about it which is great but that just turned into a okay right yep, yep. all right we got yep thank congratulations let's do this <laughs> so it was just a little it was a little much it was a little much kudos to her and, and that's great and that's awesome I mean. Supporting all of it, it just yeah, it was weird. If you should have timed it a little better, maybe put it at the end or had somebody at the back with a red light being like, "Okay, my time's up. You gotta let's wrap this up. We only got twenty five more minutes to do this." Yeah, because it was a timed event. Like right. they didn't have a whole lot of time with it too much as they wanted to get through. Yeah, um, they needed to get out. There, there, there was a certain time that the heritage center was like, you, "Yeah, you guys have to be out." Yeah, so they should have either told her like, "Hey, you got to keep it within like a couple minutes," right. or, uh, well, I think they surprised her. Cut that fucking. Game of Thrones intro that <laughs> wasted two minutes everybody's live and give that to her. <laughs> yeah, that's probably better. But um, yeah. So hopefully that this continues. Hopefully there's yeah. more entries because obviously the turnout's not great considering there's even if you just go with guild related breweries, 130 I think at this point, a little over 130 breweries. Um, I think the highest category was 19 entries. Yeah, I think most were like six or seven, right? Yeah, there were some were seven. seven. I think the lowest was five. Um, the other thing is, like I said, the Arizona craft beer awards festival is two weeks after this event or was two weeks after this event. Right. Do you think it would benefit if they did the awards on Friday and did the festival on Saturday? Yes. Yeah. I was always confused. I think we, we talked to them at, uh, we're on, uh, no Woody, who was actually at Belby park, but he was there doing stuff for, and talking about it. And I was like, Oh, I thought this was like you're gonna have a festival, like an award ceremony, and then have the festival the next day. Like, and kind of have it flow into like a weekend or something. And right. No, it's not. It's a completely different thing. So, yeah, you know, it's what it is. Because hopefully it would grow into something like that, and then you could maybe do like a super VIP award. Because this isn't a public event. No, no, it's not the awards. The festival is, but yeah. the awards aren't a public event. So that'd be kind of like a nice little. I don't know, like super VIP. Yeah, you get yeah. to go to the awards. Yeah, I get to check, hang out with uh, craft brewers and, and stuff. Uh, and then they did make an announcement, uh, speaking of that kind of stuff, they want to get the Brewers Ball going again. So, which would be cool. Which would be cool. So we'll see how that goes. Well, it's fun. I'm glad uh, everybody won and award season is kind <laughs> of over. Everybody, so. I just want everybody to win. Everybody won. Book. Congratulations. You all are winners in my book. You make beer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then they couldn't give us enough beer when we left. Yeah, that was the thing. They had a, a, like a lot. Like last year was funny because they didn't. I feel like they didn't have enough beer. Right. And then this year they were leaving. They're like, "Do you guys want to take some?" And you're like, "Oh, okay." So 
since yeah. the beers we're drinking, which is great. Yeah, we're so, we're thanks. drinking a lot of bottled beers because they're like, hey, do you want some of these? And I was like, sure. And they gave me a box. <laughs> and then they, as I'm trying to walk out, they just kept putting bottles in the box. And yeah. I was like, I'm not going to drink any of this shit. So that was fun. But right. eh, I will listen. I'll take it. I'm going to say no. It's great. Yeah, if it promotes the craft beer industry, which I I do think the like I said, the real time results. It was streaming. I that think. was so cool. Yeah, um, I like that a lot. Yeah, to be able to to look at that and then like we get to do now we can compare like, oh, like we know for sure people submitted the same beers at GABF and to yep. this and they, they weren't the results weren't the same. So right. hopefully with that comes more education for judges because last time I saw that anybody could go be a judge if you do the requirements for it. Right. And I think that's one thing I know we talked about when we talked to Rob and, and Andrew last time they said something about maybe getting us uh, involved in it. But I think when that was happening, like it, we, it just didn't work out or whatever, but we need to, we need to reach out to them again, make sure that we're on their radar to have us come maybe and uh, go do some of that judging, just be part of it to one, get experience of doing it and, and get kind of behind the scenes stuff uh, to talk about. And at the same time, I think it's, it, it would be important to help, you know, we can actually, that's another way we can give back to the crap your community as well. Right. And so, it would be fun to, yep. to do that. Cause I know like the, uh, Ash, the homebrewers club, they're always looking for judges. And obviously the education part of it is getting people educated, to make these decisions and right. hopefully give away a bronze <laughs> <laughs> right? in the Porter category. And then just having the information, like what, how do the point systems work? How do the, just learning those ins and outs, I think would be fun yep. and good information, but. Correct. So it makes more sense when we actually see the awards and how they're put out there so. right all right edward this was a good show thank you i did it all by yeah. myself all right <laughs> it's all it's all you uh no it's i mean it's easy when you have this much information to go through and i think they need to add a collab category that would be my final thought that'd be really nice yeah a collab would be kind of cool who made the best collab throughout the year because that would probably foster more right of that happening especially in a collab with another Arizona brewery, right? Like you can't right. be like, Oh, it's my collab with freaking Treehouse. Like that doesn't work, <laughs> you know, but it's, you know, Oh, that was my one gripe. Why the fuck is four peaks allowed to participate in this? I don't know. Like they are well, not a craft brewery. I don't care what they do for the, for the community. I know they're, everybody always says they're still part of it and they still contribute and they still help people out. Yeah, that's fine. But this isn't for them. They right. can, if they can sponsor the fucking categories or they can right. pay for stuff, but correct. I don't think they should be allowed to Submit participate. In I, this I don't. Yeah, that's all. true. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I thought that was kind of weird too. It was like, but yeah, as a sponsor, get it as a contributor. No. Right. So, because as much as not giving away a bronze legitimizes it, allowing like four peaks in there takes that legis- takes legitimacy a little, a little bit away. Yeah. But. Yeah. Sus beer snobs. That's yeah. That works. But they didn't. I don't th- think they won anything. So that's good. Right. Well, I think it even more of a deal if they actually did win something. So. <laughs> they won gold in every category, even the ones they didn't <laughs> enter. Yeah. They even had that style of beer, but they still won. It's crazy. Good stuff. All right, Ed. Well, if you want to find more information about us, where should they go? They should go to the internet where you can find all sorts of fun stuff. You can go to our website at hoppycraftsman.beer. Something we don't really mention a lot. You can email us at hoppycraftsman at gmail.com. You, uh, you can find us on Instagram at hoppycraftsman, threads, hoppycraftsman. We still haven't posted a thread yet. We're just waiting for that perfect thread thread to post. To post. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't either. Um if this is a thing, you can find us on Reddit as a hobby craftsman because we did do an episode about uh, hot beer takes or unpopular, unpopular beer opinions yep. from Reddit. So maybe we'll that was that was the last episode, Ed. Maybe we'll start some threads or some. Sorry, they're not threads. No, no, they're just posts on the yeah. Reddit community. Yeah. So you have to go to a community and then post them there. Yeah, so. maybe we'll start a a beer group on there and or just farm more unpopular opinions yeah um untapped which we never use at hobby craftsman and i then, forgot that we even had that yep well we do uh maybe we'll check in some of these beers and then the most important one is you can find us on patreon.com slash hobby craftsman and those are where you can go and support the show and we do have a few supporters chris who are those people uh those people are the rest fucking people in the world that is terrence hollows jeff johnson zach dominguez and cena gomez uh and, and if you don't want to spend money the easiest way is everybody has an Apple iTunes account, right? Everybody has that. Go to iTunes 
right? Go to Apple Podcasts and just give us a rating, right? Leave a one sentence and just say, hey, great show. Love the show. If you felt at any way that you, you know, got anything from this show that we helped you understand the crappier community better, uh, please do that. Just go and give us a rating. I think people should go to give us a rating and they should put five stars and then tell us their combination for sour stout. Their choices. <laughs> what their sour stout yeah. top five. What's the silver gold and no, you know. just, just go rate five stars and maybe one day on the show we'll read people's choices for their Listen, sour stout combination. I would love that you left a five star review and then gave us a scathing review. <laughs> like if it gives five stars, but then make it like the meanest review ever. And I think that'd be hilarious. That'd be fun too. So yeah. So well, thanks we'll everybody. Thanks for listening. Ed, it's been fun. Till next time. Till next time. Bye. Goodbye.